Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 11, constant rate. Constant rate, so we're going to use the letter C to represent constant rate, so here we go, example one. Pauline mows a lawn at a constant rate. Suppose she mows 35 square foot lawn in 2.5 minutes. What area in square feet can she mow in 10 minutes where T is minutes? Okay, so we want to set up a proportion. We were given something we knew. She mows 35 square feet of lawn in two and a half minutes. So if I set up um, square feet divided by minutes or time, then that is going to be 35 divided by 2.5. So that's a ratio. A proportion is when we take a ratio and set it equal to another ratio and then prove that they're equivalent or find a value that will make them equivalent. So it says what area in square feet, so square feet's in the numerator, so that's where the A is going to go. They're asking what area can she mow in 10 minutes? So area over 10. So here's our proportion. Three and a half, or 35 square feet in two and a half minutes, how many in 10? So in order to solve this problem, we cross multiply. And so if I multiply this way, I get 35 times 10. And I'm just going to write that for now. 35 times 10 equals 2.5 times A. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply 35 times 10 and get 350 equals 2.5 A. And then finally, we have to get A by itself. That's 2.5 times A. So to get A, isolate A, then we're going to divide both sides by 2.5. These cancel, and we get A equals. OK, so I get the calculator out. 350 divided by 2.5 equals 140. Okay, so now it says what area in square feet. So my area equals 140 square feet or feet squared. So that is my answer. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to come up with an equation, okay? a constant rate equation that will help us plot values for different times to find different areas and come up with a linear equation for each and then we want to graph it. So the first thing we need to do is we see that we have time t and we have area in square feet y. So if I go back up to my formula here where I have 35 over 2.5 which is going to be used again, 35 divided by 2.5, and I set that equal to an area in square feet is now y instead of this a, and I'm going to divide by, instead of minutes, it's going to be t for time in minutes, so this is my proportion. I want to come up with a linear equation, so I'm going to cross multiply. y times 2.5 is 2.5y, equals 3.5 times t, which is 3.5 t. Now I want to solve for y. I want to get y by itself, so it says y equals. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2.5. And the 2.5s cancel, and I'm left with y equals, there is no decimal there, by the way, y equals, that's going to be 35 t, not 3.5. And I can simply just leave that as 35 divided by 2.5 t. So my linear equation is going to be this right here. So I'm just going to move that now down here. It doesn't quite fit. Let me just rewrite it so it does. So it's going to be y equals 35 divided by 2.5 t. Okay, so there's my linear equation. So what I'm going to do now is 
copy this down multiple times and substitute in t for some values. So let's do the values first. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to get rid of that t. So there's my equation. And I'm just going to repeat this multiple times. You can just rewrite it over and over. So there it is again. And I need one, two, three more. So I move this down three times. And I have my equation every time. The only thing that I'm missing is the t. So the t it is my values in minutes over here. So that's my t. So this is going to be times 0. This one's going to be times 1. This one's going to be times 2, times 3, and times 4. Okay, so anyway, we have this first one. 3.35 over 2.5 times 0 is simply 0. Anything times 0 is 0. 35 over 2.5 times 1 is 35 over 2.5, which equals, and I did this on the calculator already, 35 divided by 2.5 is 14, so that is simply 14. Then when I multiply it by 2, I'm going to get 70 over 2.5, so that's going to equal 28, because I doubled it. And if I multiply it by 3, then I'm going to get 105 over 2.5, and that's just going to be times the 14 times 3, which is 42. And then finally times 4, 35 times 4 is 140 divided by 2.5, and that's going to be another 14 onto 42 is 56. Okay, so there's my T time, Y area, zero. Okay, so now we're going to graph. In order to graph, I need an ordered pair. So this is the point T comma Y. All right, let me move that up. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm graphing T comma Y. So T is zero and Y is zero. So I'm going to plot the point zero, zero. So here's t, time in minutes t is my x-axis, lawn mode in square feet y is my y-axis, so my t comma y is 0, 0. So that means if I don't mow any lawns, 0 square feet, it's going to take me 0 minutes. Okay, the lawnmower doesn't mow, move, it doesn't take any time. So then I'm just going to write my ordered pairs now. 1 comma 14, 2 comma 28, 3 comma 42, and... 4, 56. Okay. I'm going to plot these. 114 is right about here. And 228 is approximately here. And 3, 42 is, oh, I'd say right about here, not quite halfway. 42.5 would be half. And 4, 56 is up here. So there are my points. Okay, so if you remember from the beginning of seventh grade, the first module in seventh grade taught us about our constant rates. We called them constant of proportionalities back then. We used K. Now we're calling it C. And it is a proportion if the line is a straight line graphed going through the origin. And this obviously appears to be a straight line, and it does go through the origin. Okay, number two. Okay, here's example two. It says water flows at a constant rate out of a faucet. So we're going to call C our constant rate. Suppose the volume of the water that comes in th out in three minutes is 10.5 gallons. Okay, so three minutes, 10.5 gallons. Volume? And minutes is T time. So we see V in gallons down here, T in time minutes for our table. So we now have C, V, and T. So we're going to compare volume to 
time. So it's always y divided by x. So if this was our y and this is our x, it's v divided by t. So we are going to get c equals v divided by time, volume divided by time. So in, since we have that, we now know that it's a constant rate and volume. So now you know, my c is volume 3 in how much time? 10.5. So three gallons per 10.5 minutes. I have that backwards. Okay, so three minutes. Okay, always double check your work. Three minutes volume is 10.5 gallons. That's better. So 10.5 divided by three. Okay, so then what we're going to say is, well, since C equals 10.5 divided by 3, 10.5 is our V and 3 is our T. Okay, so our linear equation, we're, first we're going to take that 10.5 divided by 3 and set that equal to V over T and cross multiply. So I'm going to get 3V equals 10.5 T. I'm trying to get V by itself, so I'm going to divide by 3. The 3's cancel, and I get V equals 10.5 divided by 3, T. So that's what I'm going to write for my linear equation here. V equals 10.5 divided by 3, T. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video right now, and I'm going to copy that down multiple times like I did last time and replace and then remove the t. Okay, so now I have this v equals 10.5 over 3 because that's my constant, my c. That never changes. Okay, that is my constant rate of change. And I have variables that I'm going to substitute in now. So I'm going to plug these values in over here for t. So t here is 0 times 1 times 2 times 3 and times 4. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to multiply these. Well, anything times 0 is 0. And 10.5 divided by 3 times 1 is 10.5 divided by 3. 3 goes into 10 3 times with the remainder of 1. And it goes into 15 5 times, so that's 3.5. So there's our real constant rate of so our C is 3.5. So now I'm going to take 10.5 times 2. I'm just going to do these out and then reduce. So it's 10.5 times 2, which is 21, divided by 3, which equals 7. And then 10.5 times 3, 10.5 divided by 3 times 3, is actually I could cancel but I'm going to show my work I'll just pause in there the threes could cancel I'll get 10.5 but I'm going to show my work 31.5 divided by 3 which equals 10.5 and then I'm going to multiply 10.5 times 4 which is 42 divided by 3 which is 14 Okay, so now I have these ordered pairs I'm going to graph. So it's 0, comma, 0. Remember, I'm graphing t, comma, v, which is my x, y. And I'm going to graph 1, comma, 3.5. I'm going to graph 2, comma, 7. 3, comma, 10.5 and 4 comma 14. Those are the five points I'm going to graph. The point 0, 0 is here. The point 1 up 3 and a half is right here. The point 2, 7 is right here. The point 3, 10.5 is halfway between 10 and 11. And the point 4, set 14 is right here. So these are our points here, 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 and here. So it's a, if I graph this and connected the dots, that'd be a straight line going through the origin. 
Okay, exercise one. Now it's your turn to try. So pause the video, see if you can do this, come back and we'll check. Okay, here we go. Juan types at a constant rate, C. He can type a full page of text in three and a half minutes. So if I look down here, time, P. So there's my T. We want to know how many pages P one can type after T minutes. He can type a full page, one P, in three and a half minutes. So if I'm going to say C equals Y over X, so if this is my Y and this is my X, Y is P and X is T. So I want P over T and my P is one and my T is three and a half. Let's change that to a decimal. So we have 3.5. So that's our C. And remember that we have that is equal to P over T. So I can say one is to 3.5 as P is to T. And I want to solve this for P. So I'm going to cross multiply and get 3.5 P equals 1t. So this this way and 1 times t is t. Divide both sides by 3.5. Divide by 3.5. So therefore p equals 1 over 3.5t. So I'm going to write this here. p equals 1 over 3.5t. Okay, so I've copied down the P equals C, and then now the T is what we're going to substitute in. T is zero in this case, so I'm going to be times zero. This one's going to be times five, times 10, times 15, and finally times 20. So anything times zero is zero. Five divided by 3.5 is going to be my answer here. And I'm just going to do the decimals first or the, the multiplication first, and then I'll worry about simplifying after. That's 10 over 3.5, 15 divided by 3.5, and 20 divided by 3.5. Okay, so if I want to convert this to decimal so I can graph, because if you look down on the graph, okay, uh, time in minutes is an integer, and time in pages p is an integer. So rather than doing fractions like 5 over 3.5, I'm not certain where that would be exactly. It would be better if I converted that into a decimal. So I'm going to get my calculator out. And if I take 5 divided by 3.5, I get 1.428. Let's round to the tenth. So 1.42 is approximately 1.4. So we're going to say approximately 1.4 pages. And we're going to keep doing this. And then we're going to now take 10 divided by 3.5. And that is 2.9, roughly. Rounding to the 10th. And get the calculator back. And 15 divided by 3.5 is 4.28, which rounds to 4.3. So that's an approximation, 4.3. And finally, 20 divided by 3.5. And that is 5.71, which rounds to approximately 5.7. OK, so there's our numbers. And so that is the point 0, comma, 0 when I'm graphing my t, comma, p in this case. And 5, comma, 1.4. And I'm going to graph the point 10, 2.9, the point 15, 4.3, and the point 20, 5.7. So zero zeros at the origin right here. 5 up 1.4 is just shy of 1.5, so about here. 10, and then up 2.9, which is just shy of 3, right about there. 15 up to 4 and a point 3 is less than half so about there and then finally 20 and 5.7 is just more than five and a half just shy of five and three quarters 
So there's our four points, five points, one, two, three, four, five. And if I drew a straight line, it would be a straight line going through the origin. So there's our graph. D, about how long would it take Juan to type a five page paper? Okay, well, if that's the case, then I would go back here. And now we're talking pages. So I'm gonna take that equation, P equals one over 3.5 T. P equals one over 3.5 T. Now it's saying how long would it take Juan to type a five page paper. So now we know P equals five. So I'm going to substitute in five for P equals one over 3.5 T. Now in order to solve this, I have to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3.5 over one or simply 3.5. And I multiply both sides by that. 3.5 and the 3.5 cancel, leaving me with t equals 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. 17.5, 17 so it would take 17.5 minutes to type a five-page paper. Okay, here's a exercise two. Try this, pause the video, come back, and here we go. Emily paints a co at a constant rate. She paints at a constant rate. She can paint 32 square feet, okay? 32 square feet, and that is A, area, in five minutes, time, T. I'm getting that from down here and there. That's our X. This is our Y. Okay. That was good. All right, so it says, write a linear equation in two variables that represents the number of square feet Emily can paint in a given interval. So, I know C equals Y over X or A over T. And in this case, my A is 32 and my T is 5. So now I'm going to use this right here, cross multiply and get an equation that says a equals, so a times 5 is 5a, equals t times 32, 32t. To get a by itself, we divide by 5, and those cancel, and our equation is a equals 32 fifths t. So I'm going to write that here, a equals 32 divided by 5t. All right, now I'm going to copy this down multiple times. Okay, so I have A equals 32 fifths. My constant rate of change never changes. That's why it's called a constant. And the T, the variable, changes. That's why it's called a variable. It varies. So T time 0 times 0 times 1 times 2 times 3 and times 4. Anything times zero is zero. That gives me the point zero, zero. This is the point one comma something. 32 fifths times one is 32 fifths. And let's change this to a decimal for graphing purposes. Five goes into 36 times with a remainder of two. Two fifths is four tenths, so that's point four. Hopefully you're able to do that in your head like I just did. And if not, you need to practice. So this is 6.4, 2 comma something, 32 times 2 is 64 divided by 5. 5 goes into 6 once with a remainder of 1, 5 goes into 14 twice with a remainder of 4, 4 fifths is 8 tenths, 12.8. Next one, 12.8. 3 comma something. 3 times 32 is 96 divided by 5. 5 goes into 9 once. The remainder of 4. 9 times 5 is 45. With the remainder of 1. 1 fifth is 2 tenths. 19.2. 19.2. 19 and finally 4 comma something. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, so 32 times 4 is 128 divided by 5. 5 goes into 12 twice with a remainder of 2. 5 goes into 28 5 times a remainder of 3. 3 fifths is 6 tenths. 
So there we have it, decimal form. Eureka! They put it on a separate page. Fantabulous. So now I'm going to go back and forth multiple times. Zero, zero, one, six point four. So let's do two at a time. The point zero, zero, and then one, six point four. Now this is seven. Okay, so notice that we're in increments of two here. So seven is here. 6.5, 6.4 is probably right about here. Now I'm going to go back and look at my values. And I didn't put this here. And I have 12.8, two 12.8. So I go over to up to 12. 13 is here, so just a little lower. And that is right there. The next one is 3 comma 19.2. So I go over to 3, go up to 19, which is here, halfway between 18 and 20, and then up just a little. There is 19.2. Okay, and now I go back, and I have 425.6. So 4 is here, go up to 24, 25.6 is probably up here somewhere, about right there. So there is our graph straight line going through zero. Okay, so I already read that last question real quickly, and so I'm going to use this again, A equals 32 over 5T. So I'm gonna write this here, A equals 32 over 5T. So it's saying about how many square feet can Emily paint in two and a half minutes? Well, what we could do is go up and approximate, that's one way, so two and a half minutes is here. So if I come up here and I want to be somewhere so that this straight line goes through there, it's probably somewhere just over 16. But I'm going to do it accurately here. So now it's asking two and a half minutes. That's my T. And two and a half is five halves when I multiply and make it improper. So this is going to be A equals 32 over 5 times 5 over 2. The fives cancel, and 32 divided by 2 is 16. So I'm going to fix this. This is actually right on 16. So it should be 2.5 comma 16 right there. Okay. So there is my point in between these two. Number three, Joseph walks at a constant speed. Let's change colors. Constant speed C. He walks to a store that is one half mile away in six minutes. So we have time and we have one half of a mile, which is distance. I'm not going to assume that's what they use. So let's take a look. Interval T is time. And are we going to graph this? Time and M is distance in miles. So they aren't using D, they're using M. So let me erase that. One half miles. It says write a linear equation in two variables. So we're going to say C equals. So I'm going to write C equals Y over X. Keep in mind that Y is M and X is T. So M over T. This is really difficult going page to page to page. Okay, so we have C equals M over T. And my M is a half or 0.5. And the reason we're using decimals is for the ease of graphing. And my T is 6. So now I'm going to use this proportion here that equals C to, to set up our equation. So I want to set my equation equal to my Y equals, and it's Y over X. So I want M on the left, Y equals 6 times M is 6. M equals 0 0.5 times T. Divide both sides by 6, and the 6 cancels, and I get M equals 0 0.5 over 6T. So there's my equation right here, and I'm going to copy it and bring it over to the next page. Okay, Control-C, move to the next page. I'm just thinking out loud here. All right. Control-V. Okay. 
So M is 0 0.5 T over 6 T. So there's my equation. So I'm going to write that here. M equals 0 0.5 divided by 6 T. Okay, so now I've copied this down multiple times because the constant doesn't change. And the time t does. So I'm going to multiply this by 0, multiply this one by 30, multiply this one by 60, and multiply this one by 90. And finally, that looks like an 8, 9, 0, and this is 120. Okay, so this is the m distance in miles, 0 times 0 0.5 over 6 is 0. I'll put the coordinates over here. That's 0 comma 0. This one will be 30 comma something. This one will be 60 comma something. And this one will be 90 comma something. And this one will be 120 comma something. OK, so 30 times 0.5 is 15 divided by 6, which equals 6 goes into 15 2 times. 6 times 2 is 12, with the remainder of 3. 3 6 is a half, so it's 2.5. I'll put 2.5 here. OK, now I'm going to do 0 0.5 times 60. That just means a half of this number, so it's going to be half of 60 or 30 divided by 6, which equals 5. So this is 60 comma 5. And half of 90 is 45 divided by 6, which equals 7.5. 7 times 6 is 42 with a remainder of 3. 3 6 is a 3, 3 6 is a half. 120 times a half, or divided by 2, is 60 divided by 6, which is 10. So this is 7.5, and this is 10. So now I'm going to plot those. Okay, so I have the point 0, 0 going through the origin. That's a good thing. 30 comma 2.5. Here's 3, so it's a quarter of the way up. This is intervals of 2. Okay, 60 comma 5. 5 is halfway between 4 and 6, so that goes there. 90 and 6. 7, didn't mean to draw that line there. Here's 6, 7's halfway, and 7.5 seven and is up another more quarter more. And then finally, 120, comma, 10. So there's my line. All these points would fall on the same line going through the origin. So now it says Joseph's friend lives four miles away from him. About how long would it take Joseph to walk to his friend's house? Explain. So what I would do is say, okay, well, four miles, that's distance, that's four. Four is right here. So I want to go over here until I'm, I'm in between these two lines. And I'm thinking that's probably happening right here at 45 minutes. Okay, that is my approximation. But now I'm going to explain it using the formula. So the formula is m equals 0 0.5 over 6t. And we're already told that it's 4 miles. So that's my m. So 4 equals 0 0.5 divided by 6 times t. And to get rid of that fraction, I multiply by 6 over 0 0.5. And these cancel. And what you do to one side you do to the other. 0.5 will go into 4 8 times, and 6 times 8 is 48. So my approximation was 45, but really it's over to the right a little further at 48. Okay. That was a long lesson, and that is the end of that long lesson. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.